the leading story in South Africa today. KwaZulu-Natal Premier Nomusa Dube Ngube says police alone cannot fight gender-based violence. She was speaking after grade 12 Umlazi learner was hospitalized after being assaulted by fellow pupils. This was allegedly due to her sexual orientation. And in the Western Cape, sexual and violent crimes uh, against women seafarers are rarely spoken about. But the women in the industry say they've experienced rape, sexual harassment, verbal and psychological abuse. Victims say they're reluctant to report their cases for fear of losing their jobs. Now, our reporters in Kobile Matlala and Aisha Esmal have been on the ground following up on these stories in those provinces. And let's cross live to them to get the very latest. Ladies, thanks for your time. Uh, a, a story that, or both stories, really getting people talking across the country. And let's start in KZN with you, Nkobile. The family of this young girl must be very emotional about the incident. Um, maybe tell us how they feel and what we know about what happened. Well, Marcel, they're very distraught. I mean, when you speak to them, you can visibly see how much pain they're going through. The mother couldn't even speak. She spoke for a brief moment and she asked the father to take over because mm. she was just getting emotional. This is their 19-year-old child that's been molested, that's been uh, beaten up, and they've had to see it going to hospital, and they've had to comfort the child and say, you're going to get better, it's going to be all right. But they're saying that this has happened in the community, in the in front of people they trust and people that they've grown to understand and know over time. But now they feel betrayed in a sense because this happened in full view of the community. And also at the same time, it happened in a school where they took their child to. So a lot of pain, a lot of anxiety in terms of what will happen next? Will they get the justice that they need? And of course, they are asking for that justice and they want the police to make sure that the perpetrators are brought to book but at this point they're saying that they don't know what will happen from what we understand though is that this 19 year old was allegedly assaulted and raped by some fellow students in the same school and mm -hmm. this is mostly people she has been around mainly and so they're just saying that they want justice and they want it now <laughs> Umanga <laughs> Nano Guti, a Jengoba Eglesimo Axon, Goba Am Sisia Saba even Guti, Nomebuel and Paratin equal at twelve, Mclampo Sebuya and a stigma, Nano Gutu will mean in Clampe Uge, Uzam Gutem Paratinetu, Uspundis and Alas into Saba, Zali Saba, San Goba, Lesin to Zienze, Gakul, Nawimim, what does the report? So what does so? Now, Nkubile, my follow-up question to you is twofold. What are we hearing from the authorities, from the police, really, about the investigation into this incident? And then what are we hearing from other community leaders, um, whether at the school or, or uh, in civil society in the community, about what they're going to do for, uh, about what points to there being an issue uh, with regards to intolerance, if this uh, uh, story is to be believed, that this assault came as a result of this young woman's sexual orientation? Well, according to the parents, Marcel, it is indeed, because as you can hear there, the father says it's not the first time that it has happened. And it almost seems as if there was a sense of if they do this to her, they would then get her to be the kind of woman that they want her mm. to be. So it's it's quite a sad one. You hear from the parents saying that it has happened. It had ha This is the third time it has happened. It may have ha not happened at the same magnitude, because at this point we understand that there was quite a 
number of, of pupils that engaged in this incident. So it's quite difficult. And also the fact that the perpetrators are still out there, some of them are still out there, and they've even gone as far as even go to the hospital to go steal her phone whilst she's sleeping. So they've had to even move, move her from the hospital she was in because they fear now for her life. But if you speak to Genepe's violence, survivors that were there, you can hear already from them. They're saying that such things have happened in the past in, in certain other areas, but also they're saying that they're going to be here to support. You will note that the family was part of the launch in the 16 days of activism, so they got a chance to engage with some of the people that have been through to something similar, and perhaps not exactly, but similar, so they could hear and get the sense of comfort in terms of what is the way forward. But from the family, they don't want want her to go back to the same home that she comes from. They're saying that if it could happen three times already, this means that it can happen again. And so they're scared. They're scared and they want the authorities to take charge. So from the authorities' side, you can hear from the Premier. The Premier says investigations are still ongoing. I do understand they do have some um, of the perpetrators that have been pointed out that those are some of them that they've already got. Others are still out there and they're saying that they're still going to be looked or looked for at this point. She went to the police station. We saw her engage with some of the police officers. And of course, because investigations are still ongoing, we can't get as much details as we would like to know about the incident. However, the Premier said that she decided to handle this herself because she's a mother. Mm -hmm. She understands the pain that the family must be going through. But at the same time, she's worried about how women are treated in the society, women, kids, um, as well. And she's saying that at this point, she wants to make sure that there is some form of justice. They are going to continue to check what is happening to her life, and they're going to try and assist her. Now, we know that they've already replaced the phone, which was already stolen. Um, we saw her give to the family. We know that they are currently saying that they're counseling her. Social development was there, and they did say that they are actively speaking to the family as well. So we will continue to monitor her to see just how far um, of assistance she's going to get. But it does seem like um, this is something that has happened over time and the people that did this to her are people that know her. Let's look on, on learning about the matter, when I got here, um, Delena was still crying. Um, she was still not able to talk and whenever she would try and talk, she was crying. So I had also to make sure that um, I'm able to counsel her but also, you know, make her realize that we are now here to come and assist her. Um, we've moved her out of this hospital because we felt that it's not safe for her because other perpetrators have not been apprehended. There are others that have been apprehended because there were many of them. The worst thing is that she was also sexually um, assaulted. So uh, all of those things combined, um, we needed to make sure that now that we are here, um, I do the right thing, that is of bringing now everybody um, to say, here is the case. We are in the, you know, at the beginning of intensifying our, our fight against gender-based violence.